welcome to the latest episode of The Lisa Pizik Show. Today, I am so honored and excited to have my friend here, Carrie Menzier. He's gonna be talking to us about communication. And I know communication is a beast. We're like, I wanna be a better communicator. I wanna be more effective. I wanna have less conflict. Whatever it is in your life that makes you want to be a better communicator, Carrie's gonna talk to us about it. And he knows a thing or two about this because he is a retired sergeant, 30 years in the police department. Carrie, we honor you. We're so glad that you are here and that you're doing this with us. Thank you. And he's also the CEO and founder of The Audience Whisperer. I love the name of that. So Carrie, welcome and thank you for being here. Lisa, I am, I, I'm honored to be here. So thank, thanks for having me on the podcast. I'm so excited to dig in because, you know, communication is one of those things that it is. It's like a beast. It's like I want to be a better communicator and I want it. Most people, I would think, probably want it in all areas of their life. They don't want to like just be good in business but then have their whole life falling apart or vice versa. So when we think about communication, you know, is there a difference in the way that we communicate in different scenarios? Or is it like once you master it in one area, then you're doing pretty good in all the other areas? Like how does that kind of work? Yeah, that, that, that's a great question to kick this whole thing off with because the reality is when you put time and effort into learning something, you want those skills to be transferable. And communication is absolutely one of those skills that is transferable. Because if you think about it, uh, if you talk about sales work and everybody's like, oh, I don't like sales. I mean, some people love it, but there's a lot of people who are like, oh, I don't like sales. You're selling everything to everybody every day in your entire life. If, if you have a five-year-old, if you're trying to get your five-year-old to eat his vegetables, that's a sales job. You have to communicate effectively. And my favorite phrase is you have to communicate in the language that your son can hear best. Because mm -hmm. if you just communicate in the language that you speak best or that you hear best, well, that's not going to be really effective as a parent. And we have to parent the child that we have, not the child that we want to have. Yes. I well, love how you said, yeah, language they hear yeah. best. Totally. Them. Yeah. 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 And, and, and so, and, and I just want to point something out, everybody who's watching this later, the video, I want you to look at this, this beam of light that's coming across Lisa. You're an angelic girl. You are, you are naturally beautiful on the inside and out anyway, but now you have, you have like angelic rays of sunlight coming through you. So it's just pretty darn cool. You're so kind. And you've got like some sort of sun, I do. Radiate positivity. positivity. Sure. So you got you got the rainbow and you got the sunshine coming through. Anyway, I I, 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 I'm digressing. I just couldn't I couldn't pass up that moment of observation for you. So when we're talking in the language that other people can best hear, then we're we're truly going to be able to have some effective communication. Um, and I'm reminded, flashing way back, there is this TV show that was on that, that uh, was hugely popular, was on for a number of years called NYPD Blue. Oh, yes. And on that show, uh, Jimmy Smith was one of the, one of the uh, actors. And I, I don't remember his real name, but the character's name for his partner was Sipowitz. And Sipowitz was just a, a grouchy old cop and he was, he was racist and uh, mm -hmm. just, you know, he was always having problems. Mm -hmm. and they were having this, this one scene and I actually use it in a lot of my trainings, there's this one scene, it's a very short clip, where where Jimmy Smith and um, his and, and Sipowitz, his counterpart, they're in the locker room and they're having a conversation. And Sipowitz says something just outrageously wrong. Jimmy Smith, he looks at him and he says, "I can't hear you when you talk like that." Mm. It was powerful, and it was it was actually a tool that through a TV show it for designed for entertainment and a lot of TV shows actually have an underlying social change aspect to them. But that was mm -hmm. one of them. I can't hear you when you talk like that. Mm -hmm. And we have that in our relationships. I, you know, there's, there's nobody who's in a, been in a personal relationship, a, a, a committed relationship 
you know, marriage or uh, significant other, whatever long-term dating, that you haven't had some sort of conflict. Yeah. And that conflict can be at, at, at many different levels, a high level conflict or a low level. And there's times when you feel like they're blah, blah, blah. It's Charlie Brown's teacher. <laughs> and, wah, 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 and you can't hear them. You just yeah. can't hear their message. It's mm -hmm. because they're not speaking in the language that you can hear best. Mm -hmm. They're hearing themselves fine. And sometimes they're talking to hear themselves talk. Mm -hmm. We all know people like that. Mm -hmm. So when you're, when you're really intentional about your conversations, when you're really intentional about how you communicate, that works in, in personal life, it works in business. I, I, I call it the four C's, the four pillars that are the four C's. So there's community, mm -hmm. there's colleagues, there's cohabitants, the people in your life. Anybody that walks through your door is a cohabitant for some period of time, whether you live with them or they're a visitor. Mm -hmm. So those people that are, they're, 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 they're cohabitants in your personal life and then commerce. So your clients. Mm -hmm. And so when, when you look at it, at, at the community, that's, that's the public in general, your colleagues, the people that you work with, the cohabitants, the people that you're spending that, that intimate time with. And I'm not talking, it could be physically intimate and that's, that's all fun, but the, that's, those emotionally intimate times. Yeah. If, if people are over mm -hmm. at your house for, say, a birthday party, they're coming over for your five-year-old's birthday, mm -hmm. guess what? That's an intimate relationship, varying different levels of emotional intimacy, but they're there to, to support you and hang out because they, you know, y'all like each other, they have something in common. That's an intimacy. Sure. And then commerce is how you're doing business, mm -hmm. the clients, how you're interacting with them. If, if at whatever level that is, whether it's, whether it's at, a, at a, a Google and Microsoft and Facebook client or you for your coaching clients. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the four C's, how are you communicating with all of those people? The skills are all the same. Mm -hmm. you, you learn it in one area and you just simply apply it in a different area. Because if you're selling to a client, you're providing a service that you know is going to help them. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you shouldn't be selling that service. Sure. Right? Mm -hmm. And you're selling, going to bed, but brushing your teeth first to your five-year-old yep. because it's going to be a good service for him to do. Yes. It's still a sale. You're still having influence. Some people call it persuasion. Mm -hmm. I prefer the term influence because there, there, there is a subtle difference and it's the push versus a pull. It's come along with me as influence. Persuading is more of a push. Mm -hmm. and, and, there, and there's... You know, influence has uh, oftentimes uh, is just a connotation of the word. Ultimately, they do the same thing. Does mm -hmm. does somebody alter their behavior in some way, or continue with a behavior that you want them to continue with? Your son is is brushing his teeth every night. Shoot, your husband's brushing his teeth every night before he gets to bed, and you're like, ah, no, no late after late night breath here. And, and and this is a good thing. And you want your son and your husband to continue that behavior. Yeah. So it's not a change in behavior. It's just a continuing of a good thing. Uh, your clients, they continue to, they, they re-up a monthly subscription. Yep. Or they sign up with you for another year-long program because it's doing good for them. So it's just continuing a, a behavior. Um, and, and that's influence as well. So if I'm hearing you right, it's like, if you want to have influence, you have to be intentional because the first part you're saying is the whole intention. Like, how do we do that? Or what do you mean by that? We're like, okay, my intention is that I want my five-year-old to eat his broccoli before he eats the cheesy pizza. Yeah. How do I get out? So what do I do or how do I be intentional? and speak to him in the language he can hear. And we don't have to use that example, but go a little bit more example. into like being intentional and what we can control to influence and come into the situation. Yeah, it's, it's you know, I, I have heard so, so many of my clients make remarks as we're talking about communication stuff. So many of them say things like, I hate that I've become my parents. Oh gosh, yes. Right? And, and anytime you're parenting a child, I, I don't know really at some point that in a, in a, any adult over the age of 35 certainly hasn't said that, but especially when they're involved in raising kids, whether they're your own flesh and blood or from another relationship, mm -hmm. there will be something that you'll say. And as soon as the words come out of your mouth, you're like, oh my gosh, 
That's what my mother said to me or my father said to me. Yeah. And you're like, I can't believe I said or did that. But here's the thing. You weren't being intentional. That was it. That was an automatic response. What happened was your amygdala part of your brain got hijacked. And that amygdala hijack happens when you go up in your head. There's something that happens. It's, it's, it's almost always a stressful situation or a moment where you're operating out of instinct. What happens so incredibly fast is your, your brain, there's a little guy in your brain or a little girl that runs up to a filing cabinet and pulls open a drawer mm -hmm. and looks inside that for the file folder that has the instructions for how do I get my child to eat his broccoli. Mm -hmm. And it happens in less time than you can snap your fingers. And sometimes the piece of paper that comes out with the instructions are pre-written and they were written when you were five years old. Yep. And your parents were telling you, eat your broccoli. Yeah. Why? I don't like it because I said so. Yep. And then 30 years later, I don't like my broccoli. Eat it. I said so. And you're like, oh, holy hell. Right. That's all that happened. Your amygdala in the moment got hijacked mm -hmm. because you're, you experienced a little bit of stress because of the, of the frustration of I'm getting pushed back and he's not doing what I want him to do. I, I know all of the great reasons why he should be eating his vegetables. Mm -hmm. And I don't have time to explain this to a five-year-old who could never, never comprehend good health Yeah. when they actually can. And but you got to give them to them in little doses. You're not going to be able to give them the health lecture, everything you've learned in 35 years and <laughs> three and a half seconds when you're trying to get him to eat, because guess what? We got to, we got to get him in the bath and bed early because we have friends coming over or a client call or something. Yep. Bottom line is being intentional is literally taking just a moment, mm -hmm. just a moment. And that moment and this is really the powerful part of intentionality. That moment about what you're going to say does not have to be right then. Mm -hmm. That moment can be at some other time before. When you took that piece of paper out of that filing cabinet, and what was written on there was, eat your broccoli. Response will be, I don't like it. Why do I have to eat it? Next line in my script is because I said so. And you take that piece of paper out of the filing cabinet, you scratch it out or you crumple it up and tear it away or throw it away in the recycle bin, hopefully. But you then take a new piece of paper and you write out the new script and yeah. the new script goes in the filing cabinet. So the only thing you're doing is taking a moment either right before you say it or at some other point and you pre-plan your statements. You know, I, I, I teach... Um, so this gym I go to here in San Diego is amazing gym. And, and there's a security guard who works in the, in the mini mall complex who there's been some issues with him. And he always is delaying as the, the gym um, employees leave from, they, they have actually have two locations mm -hmm. in the complex and he'll stop and he'll want to chat. He's bored. He's standing there. It's a, not a high crime area. He's, he's, and so he sees them and he belongs to the gym too. So he'll stop and he'll want to chat. Well, they got to go. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so they don't want to be mean to him. They don't want to be rude and then, yeah. you know, either get in trouble or just be rude. Mm -hmm. And so what I did is I taught several of them some conversation ending techniques mm. or pre don't start this conversation techniques. Mm. So where they could be polite but they have it pre-planned. They know the situation is going to come up. You, yeah. you know at some point, your son is going to say he doesn't want to eat something, whether right. it's broccoli or all of a sudden he, it, it develops an aversion to blueberries, for God's sake. Who would, who would ever not want to eat blueberries? Some mm -hmm. people don't like them. Yeah. So there's going to be something he doesn't want to eat. Mm -hmm. This is not a mystery to a parent. Right. So why not take just a moment and, and, and replace that piece of paper the instruction sheet, the script in your filing cabinet mm -hmm. and know what's going to work with him. Mm -hmm. Now, some parents have, as an example, um, they have uh, no thank you Tuesdays. Oh. So on Tuesdays, they'll try something new, different, and you take one bite. And if you don't like it, it's no thank you and you don't have to eat the rest. Mm -hmm. So you tea, and, and the cool thing about no thank you Tuesdays, uh, and it could be any day of the week, could be no thank you, <laughs> I don't care, but you yeah. know, thank you and Tuesday seems to go together and Thursdays, no thank you Thursdays work well too. 
Mm -hmm. Point being that it's intentional. Yes. You're teaching them good manners. Yes. You're teaching them when they go to eat. And here's the thing. We want our kids to communicate well. Mm-hmm. And they're watching us all the time about how we can get and they're picking up our patterns. Uh, in fact, there's a, a, an awesome country song about that where the, the dad's driving along and he, he has to hit the brakes really quick and his kids um, drink spills and his kid says a bad word. And he's like, where did you learn that word from? Well, says, dad, I'm watching you. Yeah. I learned it from you. Totally. I watch you all the time. You're my hero. And it's like, oh, shoot, what am I teaching my kid? And the whole song's about that. So I can't remember the name, but it's an awesome song. Yeah. But the point is they're watching you anyway. So you're teaching them good manners. You're teaching them, look, try something. You actually might like it. Mm-hmm. And we're doing stuff that where we communicate, we're communicating with compassion. Yeah. We're communicating intentionally. And all it takes is a little bit of foresight. And then there's a the flip side to that. And the flip side is the parent who goes, yeah, I got three kids. I got no time to pre-plan anything. Mm. Okay, fair enough. I, un- I understand that. I've helped raise three kids before. I've got 14 nephews and nieces. I've done a lot with kids. Yeah. And I can tell you this. Um, you can live your life by design. Yep. Or you can live it by default. One way or the other, you're going to be dealing with these situations. So you can either have the arguments, the fights, and the, 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 the pushback. Or you can have some love, peace, and harmony. It's totally your choice. Yes. What do you choose? Yeah. And I was going to bring that up. I, it's so cool that you said choice because that's what was jumping out at me with like the no thank you Tuesdays or no thank Like you're communicating with them, but you are still giving them choice in that matter. So there is choice kind of on both sides there. And I really like that. And it all stems together because... It's almost like I'm hearing if you master one, you can somewhat master it all. But if you're in chaos in one, you're probably going to be in chaos in other areas too, because these are skills that you're just choosing not to learn because they're hard or they're, t- it's like, I almost tell people the same thing. It's like the time that you spend complaining could be the time that you spend learning and trying something different, you know, and you got to be committed to doing that. Like there are days where I'm like, eat your damn broccoli darn it. I'm so damn, but I'm like, eat broccoli. And then there's other days that I'm like, but if you eat the green broccoli, it's like the Hulk, the Hulk eats, you know, eats his broccoli. And that's, again, speaking that language, they can understand, right? I'm like, how do you think the Hulk got so big and why he's so green? Because he, and he'll be like, oh, and then he'll eat it. And he'll be like, this is good. And I'm like, okay, yesterday we were arguing, you didn't eat it. Today I talked about the Hulk, different response, yeah. different thing. But it's like, you have to be willing to stop and go, you know what, when we were kind of arguing about that, nobody was winning in that situation. I don't, I don't like arguing with you about that. And like you said, it's as a parent, whether it's broccoli or it's putting on your snow pants or getting in the car, like these are things, this negotiation or communication are skills that, you know, you have a choice whether you want it to be good or bad to go one way or the other way. And it's all in what you allow. I just love that you're bringing that whole intentionality and influence and choice to all of this because it's so easy to say well he'll never eat his broccoli it's just or i never have time i can't do that like i don't have time to do that it's like no no stop and be intentional so that's all like you said the first part of being a better communicator is being intentional I love that. Part. And, and and you know speaking about the the whole frustration thing all of us have victim experiences at, at some point or another We've all mm-hmm. been a victim of something, some of us repeatedly, mm-hmm. and, and, and I get that. But the thing is, are you going to have that victim experience be the script for the rest of your life, or are you going to go, okay, I learned something from that, and, and now I'm going to be the victor. I'm mm-hmm. going to be in victory. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be the winner on this. I'm not going to remain a victim, because you can roll around all day long in victim energy, and it's 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 – you know, kind of warm and, 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 and cozy because you don't have to do anything. Yeah, you have no responsibility. It. Yeah. You in it and it's like, oh, poor me. And the, the kids are, they're, they're, they're just out of control. Well, guess what? You will remain there unless yeah. you go, hey, I'm the parent. Mm-hmm. And I'm not here to be their best friend. They have tons of friends. They got one, maybe two parents. Yep. 
That's yeah. it. Now, some parents, some kids have four because of, you know, yeah. blended families and, and, and everything else. But really, when it comes down to it, when you look at all parenting relationships, almost always there is one parent. I don't care if you have one, two, or four or more parents. There's almost always, almost always, without exception, greatest percentage by far, one parent that in particular bonds with that child. Mm -hmm. just the way it goes you know we that's where, where do you think the term daddy's girl came from yeah mommy's right girl. yeah <laughs> or mommy's girl yeah. right oh, yeah. because there's a parent that tends to bond with their child more and that parent especially understanding that they have to be the parent and not their child's best friend now they can be both but the parent has to take priority over the friendship for sure because nobody else will be that bonded parent. Nobody else in this entire world will be that bonded parent. They'll have plenty of friends. And unless that bonded parent and the other parents involved in the, in the raising really step up and take their parental role, the kids will always be out of control. But again, you think about that whole concept and you're, that takes stepping out of a victim mentality. Mm -hmm. and going, I'm not going to be like that anymore. I'm going to be the victor. I am the parent mm -hmm. and taking control. Yeah. You know, I just, I just, I just watched a friend's um, relatively new dating relationship come to an end um, because the, one of the children was actually creating things that mm -hmm. stopped the two of them from getting together. And the, and, and the conversation that happened between the two of them was pretty interesting because ultimately what happened was they were supposed to meet and the, 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 the person that they were dating uh, stood them up. Mm. And then there was that 10 minutes after they were supposed to meet phone call. Hey, I'm really sorry. Something came up with my son and wait a second. Who's the parent here? Mm -hmm. who's the parent and where in, in, in clearly if, if the son is running the life of the father, mm -hmm. this is not going to change yeah. it, because if it's happening at the beginning relationship is going to continue. Yeah. So where does the parent step up and go, these are the rules and, and they're going to be enforced. And the rules are there again, comes back to a conversation you and I had just a little while ago. Boundaries give you freedom. Mm-hmm. And while this is not a parenting episode, it's a, it's a, it's a communication episode yeah. and, and communicating those boundaries, uh, you know, people all over the place, kids and adults love boundaries. Mm -hmm. They love them. And, and you think, well, no, I want to be free. We're in the land of the free and the brave. And it's like, great, be brave enough to set boundaries because to be free, you have to have boundaries. Now I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, you know, I did 30 years in law enforcement and one of the, one of the, coolest things I ever saw was something called drug court. And what would happen is people who were arrested for relatively minor drug offenses. So they were in um, possession of a, of a narcotic, but it was for personal use. It wasn't for sales or they were under the influence and they'd been arrested several times. They would get diverted out of the normal court system over to drug court. Drug court, literally you'd walk in and you'd get drug tested. Wow. And they would have what they called flash incarceration. Flash incarceration might be 12 hours. It might be up to 10 days. And what would happen is you'd come in for your drug court meeting and there'd be like, you know, 60 people in the courtroom, all defendants. And they're all on probation and they had to appear on a regular basis. They knew exactly when they had to appear in court. They needed to be attending drug treatment programs. Mm -hmm. they, and, and what would happen is they'd be randomly drug tested. And if they pop positive, they would be flash incarcerated. There would be an immediate consequence for their actions. Yeah. And what was cool was these people, you know, they get done with their court day in court and then they'd go out and they'd be hanging out with whoever. And they, so many times, and there was a lot of people that, that I personally arrested and, and put into the program and, or, or other people that I would go to drug court and, and, and watch because it was fascinating to me. Yeah. And the people would say, yeah, I go out, hang out with my friends and they want me, you know, Hey, here's, here's some rock cocaine. And like, yeah, I can't because, see, I'll get in trouble mm -hmm. and I, I don't want to go to jail or, you know, hey, just smoke mm -hmm. some marijuana because it's no big deal. No, they test me for that. I can't do it. And it, and it, mm -hmm. it gave them 
the ability to say no and, and, and to work their way out. And with that structure, mm-hmm. as important to adults as it is to children, but children especially. You know, I watched it with, with, with hardcore gang member kids, you know, teenagers that were, were getting rolled up in gangs. When they were on probation, they were on, uh, under structure. Yeah. They excelled. They yeah. started doing great in school. It's when they had all the freedom. And, and so many of the kids told me, I know my parents don't love me. Okay. What makes you think that? Because I would be hearing the parents, you know, they're all torn up about why their kids having problems. So I'd be talking to the kids and they'd go, yeah, my parents don't love me. What makes you think that? Well, if they love me, they, I got other kids at school that they make them, they have a curfew. My parents, I can be any, I can come home anytime I want. I can do whatever I want. They clearly, they must not love me. They don't care enough about me. Wow. Wow. See, the, 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 the boundaries give you the freedom. And the freedom comes with, with knowing that if, if, my, if the people who love me are setting structure for me and they're, I'm pushing back against it and they're holding firm, it's because they love me. Yeah. And so it's like, uh, you know, the typical teenager, I hate you because you're, you yeah. know, you're grounding them. Yeah. yeah. Guess what? They're saying they hate you. They know different. Yes. Because they see the friends whose parents do care about them enough to check on them. Why are you always calling me? Why are you always seeing if I'm okay? Eh, guess what? I love you. I care about you. Yes. So yes, you do have to check in and you will continue to have to check in until you know, one of us isn't on this earth anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And boundaries give you that choice and that freedom. Yeah. And when the boundaries are set, you'll make the right, or hopefully you're more pushed to make the right choice because you know it matters and you know somebody cares. Yes. That's and and, and you matter to somebody. And, and, and it literally telling your kids, look, I know you don't want to eat your broccoli. I'm cool with that. I totally get it. But here's sure. the deal. I care enough about you yeah. to have this discussion with you. And you're going to eat your broccoli. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, I, I don't do something like my mom did. My mom, uh, very interesting lady. Uh, I, I, my, this happened on more than one occasion, but one in particular. My brother hated lima beans. Mm. And, we got lima beans one night and it was amazing as we had to have lima beans and it was only because they were cheap and we i was uh-huh. raised in very not 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 a rich family by any means we were, we were i mean it was like yeah yeah five kids and two parents and yeah, we were scraping to to put food on the table all the time yeah. but so we got lima beans because they were cheap and yeah. my brother really hated them so he was he was taking them off his plate and he was feeding them to the dog well the dog didn't even like them so the dog would take them <gasps> and then spit it out. So he had this little pile of lima beans <laughs> by his feet, right? Oh, and the right. dog's sitting there the whole time. Well, he doesn't look down. He figures he's feeding lima beans to the dog. The dog's eating them. He's like, I'm scoring here. Right. I'm eating my lima beans. So my mom found this pile of lima beans, picked them up. No. Yeah. Oh. Took them over the sink, washed them off at least, oh. and put them back on his plate. You're not leaving here until you eat your lima beans. Oh, God. That's still a story that's, that's told in our, our, our family get togethers. So, you know, I, I think there's some times when you can take it to an extreme, yeah. uh, it, it, but the whole point of my examples are having structure, having boundaries, showing that you do care and you wouldn't, ca- you wouldn't, you wouldn't hold them to that unless you did care. Mm-hmm. And, and that works the same as, you know, as entrepreneurs, you and I could be up till two in the morning working. There's always, yes. There's, if you're an entrepreneur, here's the thing. If you are an entrepreneur, there is something to do every day for the rest of your life. Kind You'll of never be bored. There yeah. is no reason for an entrepreneur to ever be bored. Agreed. Right. Yes. So without those boundaries, without caring for ourselves, and we actually tell ourselves that we care enough to set limits, mm-hmm. set boundaries on how much we're going to work because we're going to take care of our bodies and make sure we get enough rest. You are actually raising your self-esteem when you, li- when you limit, when you set a boundary for yourself. Yes. So it, it, it works 360. It works with you. Mm-hmm. It works with your family. It works with your clients because your clients then, it's a ripple effect. Your clients learn to set those boundaries. And again, it's intentional. Yeah. And it's intentional communication. Yes. I'll wrap up. I love it. I want to go back for a second though with something. So what about, I'm sure the objection that you hear a lot of times is because we're saying speak in the language that they can hear. Mm-hmm. What if 
Cause you know, you've had the client or the person that says to you, like, they don't hear nothing. Like, you know, or the, you see the husband and the wife arguing and it's like, he never listens to anything I have to say, or this client is so difficult and they, this, like, it's so easy to be like, I tried everything I can. There is no language that they hear. Like, what do you do when you feel like, I don't know, maybe it's like, I just, I don't know. Like I've tried 20 times. 20 different ways to get my kid to eat broccoli or I'm always fighting with my husband or I'm always finding myself, you know, with clients that want refunds and things just aren't working out. Like, what would you say to those people that, that believe that there is no way to properly communicate or that it's like, it's always them. That's the problem. Yeah. So there's, there's a couple of things all wrapped up into that. Okay. I'm going to take the easy one first. Okay. And, and, and the easy one is we're human. We have, you know, what, 7.234, 7 7.6 billion. I, don't know, I forget what the latest figure is. We have over 7 billion people on this planet. Yes. So there's going to be someone out there that you're just not going to get along with. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. It doesn't mean that you're a bad person. It doesn't mean they're a bad person. It's going to happen just by sheer virtue of the odds. Okay. Yeah. So that's first. I understand that that may be the case. If, and this is a big if, you have truly tried everything within your power to communicate effectively. Now, with that said, if you're having conflict with a lot of people, a lot of different people in a lot of different areas, and you're having that frustration, it, it, that's simple one. It's you. Yeah. <laughs> you're blunt. You're like, yeah. yeah. The, the odds that you're picking somebody you just can't get along with are, are there, but when you can't get along with several people, you, you, you just, you have to have the, the wherewithal to take a step back and go, okay, I don't like this. This is not, not going to be fun, but I got to figure out what's my part in this. And that really is for any time you have conflict. What's my part in it? Because one of the things I, I developed early on in my police career, I would go to these I would go to these calls and it could be a two neighbors having a dispute or a husband, wife, domestic violence argument call and learn that there's three stories. Every, everything that happens, there's three sides to it. I said three stories in essence. Yeah. But there's three sides to everything. There's yours, Lisa. Mm -hmm. There's mine, Carrie. Mm -hmm. And then there's the real truth, the real truth, because we both come with our, from our own lenses and our own perceptions and our own biases subconscious and conscious and unconscious mm -hmm. that's the fact there's three sides to everything yeah. and when you're having conflict with people you really really got to step back and look okay what's my part in this mm. and and can i look at the third that that neutral objective if i was somebody outside this relationship what would what would i say about that if a friend was bringing this situation to me what would i honestly say about it mm -hmm. and find your part in it now, with that said, for the entrepreneurs are listening, I, and this was tough. This was tough for me. I, I, I will say it was one of, one of the toughest lessons for me to learn, accept, and even the absolute toughest to implement. Sometimes you'll have a client that you need to fire. Yeah. And I, you know, I can think of uh, not that long ago, I had an amazing, amazing opportunity. But the person I was in this opportunity with, um, I was having a lot of conflict with. And, and, and I knew exactly where the conflict was coming from. And I realized uh, that it wasn't going to change. And it was all about uh, control and fear. Mm. And... Um, I, I, I tried multiple ways. And finally, I, I fired my business partner. I, I walked away from the deal completely, left a boatload, boatload, like an unbelievable amount of money on the table. And I didn't care because I realized there was so, I was, it was, it, I would wake up. I was having dreams about, you know, these conversations. I was starting to have those, you ever, I, I call them forward conversations for, or, or forecasting conversations. I, I use the term synonymously. A forward conversation is this. You're, you're getting ready to get on the phone with somebody or you're driving home and getting ready to walk in the door and you're anticipating some sort of conflict. Mm 
mm. and you play out, this is what they're going to say. And this is what I'm going to say in return. And you, sometimes we practice those conversations. Yeah. And the shame of those conversations are the percentage of time, which is a vast percentage of time. Conversation goes nothing like what we play out in our head. Yeah. Nothing like it. Now, some, once in a while we get lucky and it does, but how much time has this taken up? How much mental bandwidth, how much, I call it real estate. This person, my business partner at the time was taking up so much real estate in my head, they should have been paying taxes on it. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't worth it. There was, and, and I finally got to the point where I went, okay, there is no amount of money in this world mm -hmm. to compensate me for the amount of mental anguish I'm going through dealing with this and trying to figure out what's going on and take it. I was taking up other people's times. I was turning to, to my friends and my mentors and going, I, I, here's what's happening. Give me some ideas. What am I missing? Mm. And it just came down to, it wasn't going to work. And so I had to walk away with it. So it kind of falls in that first category that I talked about. There's some people in this world that you will not get along with. Now this person and I have, a, we have a great, you know, we're friendly, we're cordial. We're fine. We're just not going to do business together. And that's yeah. okay. So you might have a client that you're going to fire. Yeah. You might have a business partner you're going to fire, and that's okay. Yeah. Now, going back to the other thing that you asked about, and, and that's where, how do I speak in the language that the other person can best hear? Because ultimately, when we come down to, before you walk away from a marriage, before you walk away from a relationship of, of any kind, whether it's a business or personal, I encourage you to really, you know, take that honest look at yourself and have you communicated in language they can best hear. So I have a tool for that and it's called bank code. So it's one of the many tools I teach my clients. Bank code is really unique. It was designed as a sales training system. What I've done is I've taken the rapport building and the communication skills mastery out of it. And that's what I use with the vast majority of the, the law enforcement agencies that I train and, and uh, clients that I have. So at Bank Code, and they, for free, as a gift to your, to your listeners, they can go to mybankcode, B-A-N-K, bankcode.com forward slash victory. One of my favorite words. I want you to be in victory. So mybankcode.com forward slash victory. And for free, it's a $97 value. For free, they can do their own personality assessment. And it's rapid. It'll take you, it'll take you less than three minutes. Nice. It'll actually take you longer to type in your name <laughs> and email and phone number so that I can follow up with you and, and, and help you understand. And um, I'll, I'll do something extra special for your, for the, for your listeners. Um, and I'll tell you what that is in just a minute. Yeah. But uh, bank code, when you find out what your personality type is, what I encourage people to do is have your, have your husband, have your wife, your, your kids do it. Also, it doesn't cost you anything. And yeah. it's quick. It's fast. It's uh, the cool thing about bank is it is, there's over, there's over 200. Some people put the number as high as 5,000, but we know that there's over 200 different personality assessments out on the market. And everybody's heard of you know, a, a lot of them. There's, you know, there's uh, Myers-Briggs, there's Colby, mm -hmm. there's DISC, and, and, and MMPI, the Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory. There's a ton of them out there. Yeah. Bank is the only one out of all of them that's scientifically validated to predict your client's buying behavior in 90 seconds or less. Wow. And again, we're in sales all the time. We're selling a bedtime. We're selling brushing your teeth. Mm -hmm. We're selling what movie we want to go to or what restaurant we want to go to or, or your coaching package. We're selling everything every time we turn around. Yeah. So the, the, the things that will make your client buy, predict your client's buying behavior, is your son's buying behavior. It's your son saying yes to broccoli to a bedtime. To, to a curfew later on in life, to yeah. what am I going to do with this car and how many people can ride with me during the first year mm -hmm. that I'm driving? Maybe never. Yeah. Um, so the, that's the great thing about bank codes. So, when, so here's why I recommend. So let's say you're married. Incredibly intimate. Guys, guys, if you're listening to this, it's going to be the night for you if you do what I tell you next. It's going to be the night. Ladies, it's going to be the night for you. Here's what you do. You get your bank code. You get your spouse's significant others, the person you're in a relationship with. You get their bank code and you sit down and you read theirs to them. And you tell them where you see that showing up. Mm. 
it will be emotionally intimate because it starts conversations that are amazing. And the great thing is it bring it, it gives you a tremendous amount of understanding about why the people in your life communicate the way that they do. Now, I'll just give you a quick personal example. So a very, very good friend of mine um, happens to be my COO, my chief of operations for, for my company. Um, I, I have a manufacturing uh, corporation as well. And so she is one personality type, I'm another. Mm -hmm. And I could never understand in our relationship why we could get along so great. And then there'd be something that would happen where uh, it felt like she just went completely in an opposite direction. I'm like, wow, where did that come from? And we'd have a low level, but we'd still have, we'd have conflict. We'd have a disagreement. We'd have a rub. Yeah. And we would get along so great. And other, I'm like, where does this come from? I don't understand it. We get along so great. And yet, mm, I'm feeling a lot of frustration right now. And you are too. And we're not, we're not able to see each other's coming from. And I feel like you're being unreasonable and vice versa. Mm -hmm. This has never happened in, in any marriage though, right? No, never. Perfect. Never. Rainbows and sunshine and flowers and butterflies. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, when those rainbows turn to storm clouds, Mm -hmm. And that ray of angelic sunshine that's coming across you in the video right now goes away. Right. And it's dark and it's stormy. And, and, and sometimes, and remind me, we'll circle back around if we have time. I'm done. When you hit that I'm done mm -hmm. statement and say it's either verbal or it's in your head, I'm done. Mm -hmm. We'll get to that mm -hmm. in a little bit. But what happened was this. So I ran her bank code. I ran mine. And I finally understood why she reacted the way that she did. So I'd come to her with this great marketing idea. Amazing return on investment. I know it. I, it's, it's in my gut. I, I feel it. I know. I, and, and she'd say, well, what's the budget on it? I'm like, it doesn't matter what the budget is because it's, we're going to get this money back. I just know it. Well, she's of the personality type. That's very much budget conscious. Yes. Doesn't want to overspend you know, what's, what's the best price that we can get for something. And she's being very budget conscious anyway, because of being COO, but she's like that in all other areas of her life. She avoids risk. Mm -hmm. And I used to think, does she run from fear? And it's not from fear. It's just that they like to avoid risk. It is their personality. Right. Once I understood that, I completely changed how I do a proposal with her. Yes. So what I do now is I come up and I say, hey, I uh, got this great marketing in idea. I want to let you know right now what the cost is and yes. why it's within budget. Um, I talk to her about things like this company has a proven track record. Mm -hmm. These are the credentials of the company. I know it's low risk because of these things. Boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. she yeah. goes, hmm. Hey, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Yeah. And there's no rub. There's no pushback. There's no friction. So it's all okay. low friction when you're communicating in the language that the other person can best hear. See, I was coming from my language about this marketing idea, and I never thought about what is her language. Her language is these things, having to deal with systems, structure, stability, low risk. Yeah. Now that I understand that, I address those issues. Mm. And it makes me a better communicator. So now, so th that's just one, one example. I, I have... I have tons of them. A good friend of mine came up to me and, and, he, and he's one personality type that's called action. And that's what bank stands for is blueprint, action, nurturing, and knowledge. So he's in action and his wife is a blueprint. So he's like fun, freedom, flexibility. She's all about system structure and safety. Mm. They're opposites. They're, they are polar opposites, but they often get together as couples because in a relationship, opposites attract. We've all heard that. Yeah. But what most people haven't heard and they only experience is later opposites attack. Mm. So how do you stop that? So I trained him in bank. Ten days later, he came up to me and he says, "Hey, I just want to tell you something, man." He says, "You saved my marriage." What? Like, what? He goes, "Yeah." He says, "I didn't tell you, but six months ago we separated for about two weeks and we got back together because of the kids and we tried it again and just just wasn't working." He says, "We're just conflict, conflict, conflict." She's always saying no to me. And I'm like, hey, let's do this. And she's like, no, I don't want to. And she didn't, it seemed like she didn't used to be like that before. She's really changed. Mm. That's what I thought. He said, now, he said, we understand where each other is coming from. 
mm. and, 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 and in relationships that that action is sometimes called the accelerate and the blueprint is sometimes called the break. Mm. And so you have this rub, you have a high friction. And in a relationship, you want low friction because you want to concentrate on the relationship, not concentrate on solving problems. Right. right? right. So uh, the bank code has been huge for really understanding how to communicate with the other person and speak in the language they can best hear. So mybankcode.com forward slash victory. Uh, you can, you, uh, your listeners can do it for whoever they need to. It's free. And if they send me an email and just say, hey, I heard you on, on, on Lisa's podcast and you mentioned something about a, another, a second free gift. What I'm going to do is when somebody runs their bank code, there's something that's generated that's called the sales report. Mm. And the sales report has tips on how to communicate, negotiate, and close the deal with that other person. Mm. Top five things that are triggers, which are things that will make them say yes, as top five tripwires, which are things that will make somebody say no. We've identified over 300 triggers and tripwires. For wow. communication wow. and and so they'll get that they'll get the top five that's all you need to, is all you can absorb mm -hmm. and that's all that you really need anyway for for the short term but i'll send them that sales report and it gives them a little bit more information and they can and and, and i really highly encourage them sitting down with whoever's special in their life you know a single parent sitting down with their kids yeah and um being being able to have that communication a teenager that you're having conflict with this is perfect because you're actually having an adult to adult conversation instead of a parent child conversation. Wow. I love that. It reminds me of like that Stephen Covey. That's what kept like flashing across my brain. The like seek first to understand then to be understood. Am I saying that right? Seek first to understand and then to be understood. That sounds like, that sounds right. And I also, mm. my favorite one in unexamined life is not worth living. Mm. I know. I love that. I just love, I have so many notes from this. I love all of the things that you talk about, the four C's, being intentional, having influence or persuasion, you know, looking at understanding and being intentional, setting boundaries, knowing when it's okay to walk away. And, you know, we don't ever want to fire people or we don't want to be fired, but that's the reality of life sometimes. Like you say, there's going to be conflicts. You're not going to be able to fix everything. But I love that. And this bank code, that's like, I'm going to get off this podcast myself and go and do this. Because it's like, once you understand, you can show up more intentional. Like the more information that you get allows you to do all of this. Be intentional, set boundaries, know when to walk away. That knowledge really is power. And it sounds like with this tool, you're arming them with the knowledge and then if they follow up with you what's the best email i can put it in the show notes but what's the best email they can uh follow up to get those five what was it again five sales well there's there's more than five there's there's, there's uh, yeah it's a sales report so it's, yeah. it's, so it's got the five tips uh triggers and five trip wires so yeah. it's going to be it's going to be everything how to communicate negotiate and close the deal love it and, and so that again that, Communicate, negotiate, and close the deal, the deal, the, the, the sale, whatever it is with that person, whether it's brush your teeth or, or yeah. buy a high-end year-long coaching package yeah. or buy this car. You know, people in real estate use this system. People in, it works for everybody, financial advisors, nice. um, it, it, real estate agents, a car, anybody in sales, anybody in sales can benefit from it. Dentists, uh -huh. chiropractors uh, use it with their clients. Um, yeah, just anybody. Love it. Works great for great. Works great for personal relationships. I love one of the favorite classes that I teach is a, a class that's relationship mastery. Nice. I, excuse me, it's communication mastery, but it's geared toward relationships. Yeah. And so when you can have communication mastery in relationships, and you know, we covered a lot of stuff. I'm mean, talking about a boatload of stuff, but you know what? We literally have scratched the surface. We 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 haven't. We've touched mm -hmm. on a tenth of 1% of the things I, that I share with my clients and cover in the classes. There's, you know, th think about this. If you could, if, if you're doing, if you're, if you're an entrepreneur and you're writing some copy, you're trying to describe your program. If you could power script your website, your landing pages, the emails that you send out so that they would land with every one of the four personality types because you're probably doing copy mm -hmm. in your personality type which means you got one 
out of four chance of getting it right. And you actually have less than that because the four personality types, if you do the math, there's actually 24 possible combinations. So if you walk up to your ATM and you punch in your pen and it's not in the right order, what are you going to get out of the ATM? Nothing, right? Well, you punch in the, you use the wrong bank code. Guess what you're going to get out of your clients? Nothing. What are you going to get out of your wife when you're trying to get a convince her to go to this one restaurant you want to go to and she wants to go to another one? You're going to get nothing. It's Saturday night in the big city. What are you going to get? <laughs> nothing. You're going home alone. Yeah. <laughs> you speak the right bank code. You punch your pin code in that at four digits into the ATM in the right order. Guess what? Cash comes out. So the, 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 the beautiful thing about this is, is really being able to, with the sales report, look at it and go, okay, this is how I communicate in the language the person best hears. And if you're doing any kind of marketing, mm -hmm. being able to speak to the language of all four personality types. Yeah. Now, now, now you're doing good because otherwise you get, you, you get a 4% chance, a little bit more than that, but basically it's 4.16 for the knowledge personality type who's going on oh, a 24 uh what's my percentage you got a one in 24 chance of getting it right yeah why not why not learn something and mm -hmm. you're gonna learn a lot just from the free assessment why not learn something that's going to be able to help you communicate with your clients better so you can serve them better yeah change the world make yeah. a difference not just a dollar Ooh! oh my gosh mic drop make a difference not just a dollar that is where I think we're going to end it because I love that. So I will make sure I put your email in the show yeah. notes. So, so Carrie, K-E-R-R-Y mm -hmm. at the audiencewhisperer.com. Carrie, K-E-R-R-Y at the audiencewhisperer.com. They can uh, actually, they can go on uh, the contact page on that website mm -hmm. and they can um, schedule a virtual coffee with me. There's a link on the contact page where you can have a free 20 minute call. Um, and we'll get, chat and figure out what your next best move is and go from there. I love it. Carrie, thank you so much for spending this time with me. Thank you for sharing all of your knowledge about how to be a better communicator, how to make change in your life and everyone else's life around you. And, you know, it's like, I think when you can communicate better, it's like that ripple effect. Everything and every situation changes. And thank you for offering that to our listeners to be able to go and make that change, make that choice, communicate better. So honored to have you on the Lisa Fusick Show. I'm honored to be with you, Lisa. And, and you are just a beautiful soul who, who is doing so much good for so many people. I love spending time around you. And even if it's virtually like this, yeah. uh, thank you for your time. And thank you for the honor of being on your show. You got it. All right, guys. Thank you. That is another episode of the Lisa Fiesick show. I'll make sure I have everything from Carrie in the show notes. Go back, listen to this one over if you need to, because there's so much good stuff that is going to come up. You know, you're going to have one area of your life where you're like, I'm doing good here. And then, Oh, this other thing comes up and you're like, I got to go back. I got to get a refresher. I got to listen again. So make sure you come back to this one and we will see you again next time. Bye for now.